Hey, Sonic Grover here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Super Collider demo. And more importantly, welcome back to Sound Synthesis. I'm very excited to get back into Sound Synthesis. I think it's been too long. In fact, my last video on Sound Synthesis was published on YouTube back in April of 2019. And so we are in April of 2020 and it's that that's just too long to go without exploring Sound Synthesis in more detail. So we're going to dive right in. This might be review. It's actually a little bit of a review for me, but uh, hopefully we'll explore some really cool things along the way. I have a sound file here from the Omnisphere library. It's about 24 seconds in length, and here it is. So it's got that ambience. You have a lot of rich harmonics that you can work with. number of frames here. I'm not going to bother with the frames at this point. I'm going to keep the file starting at the zeroth frame and moving through with some transposition. But uh, there we have the basic information for that sound file. And now on to synth depths and also, you know, an envelope that I refer to if I want to change some values to see the shape of the envelope as far as the attack and release. It has your standard amplitude argument, attack and release, and curve values for your envelope class there, as well as a buffer number, a rate number, it being one as the default, we'll have the sound file move at normal speed, our start position or the frame we start at, which I'm, of course, as I said before, leaving at zero, as well as the pan position and our output bus there. And using our play buff eugen, we can go ahead and play back that sound file and attaching that signal with the envelope, or um, I would say multiplying that signal with the envelope, as well as a pan to class there for that stereophonic space. Let's go ahead and I think actually five is a little quiet. Let's go ahead and do nine. And we have rate being half here, which will bring the sound file down one octave. So you can hear it's quite low and the output has been reduced effectively. Or two, which uh, halves the speed and, and places it one octave higher. You can also transfer or transpose in semitones, so going up seven, seven semitones using our MIDI ratio method. We can go ahead and transpose that way. some real sound synthesis using one oscillator and I've chosen the parabolic oscillator simply because to me it's the smoothest. In fact if I go ahead and plot it using LF par as our oscillator class here we can see over the course of two oscillations per second how smooth that is going up and down. You know that sinusoidal motion there. And I, I just love it. I think it's quite smooth. So we're going to add the parabolic oscillator to our synth, our play synth that we have here, just with a few additions. Really adding the argument is that par freak or that parabolic frequency, which I have defaulted at three. So three parabolic oscillations 
per second here. And I've included this as the first argument of LF par, which you would see here. We only need four. We need the frequency. We could use the I phase if you want to change the phase a little bit or add some nuance there. A multiple and something to add to the output, but I don't find those necessary right now. I just use that frequency argument. Uh, so it's defaulted at three, the same envelope, same play buff values, and including this here with our signal and our signals envelope. And we have our sample file here, amplitude at 0.8. And this is actually, we'll start at the, the normal speed here. And oh, we'll, we'll do the default here. Why don't we change it to eight? normal speed. We'll give it between one going up one semitone to up to 12, which is that octave. And we will go ahead and also change, you know, random output to 20 there. It's getting a little crowded. And there we go. down. I have this for uh, also monophiles. Now this sound sample that you hear is the stereo file, but if you wanted to use monophiles, all you would need to do would be changing, um, all you need, all you would need to change is this channel number here from two channels for the stereophonic space or the stereo file to one for that monophonic file. And now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of sound synthesis. This is what SuperClutter was built for, to dynamically change the nature of the sound in real time. We're going to use frequency modulation as our example in this demonstration, where we apply frequency modulation as a control variable to our parabolic oscillator that is also that control variable for our sound file. So using this line, Eugen, we're going to go ahead and start with 50 parabolic oscillations per second, ramping up to 500 in the course of one tenth of a second. I'm actually not going to apply that as a sound, but as a graph, a chart, so you can better see for yourself that that visualization of what will transpire in this sound file. So you can see a bit of a slow motion here, rapidly increasing in, 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 as, as the uh, time goes on, you know, the course of a given length of time. Now, this is a little bit arbitrary. I just did this for visual sake. Uh, so we won't do this in the course of one tenth of a second. We really wouldn't be able to perceive it that well, of course. So, using this example here, which I did actually get from the help file under the LF par help file, I have established the line where we start at 10 oscillations going up to 100 oscillations in the course of 10 seconds. And the sound file will release after 20 seconds. So, let's go ahead and add that. Really, this is my only change where we just add a line instead of that parabolic frequency argument that you had seen before. So as the 
oscillation moves as as the number of oscillations increase you can actually hear a harmonic shift because the actual frequency within that is changing why don't we start maybe about two and go up to 200 in the course of 10 seconds and maybe transpose it up a fourth or five semitones and at the end of 10 seconds we've reached that maximum value of 200 parabolic oscillations per second now we need a little more flexibility on our end we need a little bit more control so adding FM control by adding arguments a minimum value a maximum value and a durational value for our line here and with this we can add that to our synth in real time I added this for my own sake uh, I wouldn't advise evaluating this more than one at a time I, I think I think I can here but I will do it sparingly uh, when I was experimenting, in case you wanted to know, uh, the levels were peaking red. So uh, it is a bit plain with fire. So I would advise you have headphones. If you're not sure, set them down and then, you know, make sure everything's green or yellow at, at the worst. see that that it was a little yellow here but not too bad and I didn't even explain what I used so going between or at least um, pulling at random one semitone up to eight semitones actually I'll do 12 here for that octave we start at a minimum of two oscillations going all the way up to 200 in the course of eight seconds now to really hear that change, let's actually bring it down to 20 as our max. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, definitely a lot more effective in, in many ways, but you can hear uh, that, that dynamically moving. Why don't we do maybe, I don't know, Let's start, let's do 16 seconds. And we'll go up to 20 and then release at two. So nice, so nice. So we started at a low, at that minimum value, speeding up to a maximum value. And that's all well and good. And we can also do where, um, uh, where, where we're decreasing that parabolic frequency. So like before, we're establishing now a maximum value going to a minimum value. So in this case, 100 oscillations to eight oscillations in the span of four seconds. Why don't we start with the normal speed here? I love that. <laughs> so good. Let's try two hundred to four the span of eight seconds. And maybe seven semitones up. That 
that's uh, that's where it gets a little hairy. You, you may have heard a little bit of that static if this comes out in, in the final mix on this video. Um, if that goes a little too much, we start seeing red peaked here. So I would use your maximum values very, very carefully. Uh, but you get the idea that starting from that, a lot of that oscillation, that, that, that huge number, um, that high amount of oscillations brought down to just a few. Um, and of course, we should add some control here. Uh, a maximum value this time be being first, followed by a minimum, of course, having a durational value there. And always be sure you have your name. So for instance, uh, par FM D, that little lowercase d is for decreasing the number of oscillations. Um, if you get your <laughs> if you get your names mixed up, you can find yourself spending hours troubleshooting and, and not knowing what's wrong and then realizing it was all about the names. That happened to me this afternoon. Two hours of troubleshooting and it was just using the wrong name. <laughs> uh, so mind your names. Yeah, that was quite nice. Um, let me go ahead and add just a little bit more amplitude there. Oh, uh, let's, I don't want to do too high. Um, between one and four semitones. And the minimum value is going to be two or up to eight. But it's ending at that value. It's ending at the minimum value. We are decreasing from high to low. And then maximum value from um, could be 20 to 80. So let's Let's give it a few goes. It's great stuff. Oh, I love this motion. bit lower. Uh, let's give it about five semitones below the normal rate. <laughs> so nice. So nice. So there you have it. That that's the first of uh, hopefully many demos to come with sound synthesis. Um, all all the parabolic oscillations. So of course we have LF cube, LF pulse, and saw and try. Um, pulse that's questionable. Uh, I like the smooth oscillations myself. Um, but you know this is for you to explore uh, with some sound files, and I hope to include mono sound files in the future as well as very short sound files. So. Yeah, that's uh, the first, at least this year, uh, the first demo on sound synthesis for you there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hope you like this demo and, and hope to see more of it. I would actually like to get into live processing, whether it's my voice, speaking or singing or the violin. So that is, of course, my hope, um, getting into more live processing there. But uh, nothing's there's nothing wrong with putting some sound files and, and messing with them. Um, but yeah, thank you always for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some more sound experimentation every Thursday, some commentary every Tuesday. And until next time, keep producing the art you love, and I'll catch you later. Thanks again.